the collective wisdom of $3 million I've invested learning from successful people applying true principles. In this educational episode, I'm going to answer the question that I've been asked many times, what are the books, 12 books thus far, uh, that you have written, Doug? Uh, what are they about? So get ready, I'm gonna give you a whirlwind tour of the 12 books that I've been blessed to have authored that have all been bestsellers so far in my career, but I will never stop writing books. So I'm Doug Andrew, and I've been primarily viewed as a financial strategist and retirement planning specialist now for nearly five decades. Uh, but I look at things at a, at a broader perspective than just money. This is why we call uh, our uh, educational firm Three Dimensional Wealth, because only one dimension has to do with finances or money. The other two dimensions uh, is like a three-legged stool actually keep you balanced. And one has to do with your foundational assets, uh, your family, your heritage, your relationships, your beliefs, your values, and, and so forth. Uh, the other has to do with your intellectual assets, your wisdom, your knowledge, experiences, alliances, and so forth. And so these are the, the three legs of a stool, and a lot of people uh, are wobbling on just one leg. They just focus on money, 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 or maybe their, their physique, and, but they're bankrupt in the other areas. So I'm very passionate about taking the wobble out of people's lives so that they don't spend maybe their, their health accumulating their wealth, and then later in life they're spending all their wealth trying to regain their health or many people uh, maybe accumulate their financial wealth at the expense of relationships with their spouse, their kids, their grandkids, or their God. And at the end of the day, they are always like, what was all this for? I have $10 million, but I'm bankrupt with my health. Uh, I uh, have run myself ragged. Uh, I don't have, uh, my, my kids won't even come around. My grandkids have disowned me. Yeah, what was all this for? You're not gonna take the money with you at the end of the day. So a lot of people um, tune into this channel to learn about a balanced approach to true or what I call authentic wealth, which is far more than the money. Because whenever I ask people, what are the most important assets that you value, that you cherish, that you possess on this earth? They know I'm not talking about money. I'm usually talking about relationships and your values and your beliefs and your wisdom and so forth, right? And so that's why in all of my books, I usually focus uh, on all three dimensions, all three legs of the stool. But a lot of people may look at uh, particular books for the financial dimension, and then I weave in the other two legs with one chapter, or maybe one section or what have you. So uh, I actually started uh, writing books clear back. Uh, I started my first book in, in 1990. And that first book took me 10 years. Uh, my second book uh, took one year. The next one took four months, and all the ones after that I have written in less than uh, 40 hours of my time. And so there's another series that I'm recording on secrets to how to author a best-selling book in 40 hours or less of your time, okay? Uh, because I've learned a lot through that process. Basically, if you watch the videos in that episode, you'll learn that you don't have to be a writer to be an author. Okay, an author comes from the word authority. An author is an authority on the subject, okay? You don't have to be a writer to be an author. I'll leave it at that, and you can watch that series if you have a book in you, okay? Because the world loves usefulness, and many people will like to um, learn the wisdom you gained, how you overcame challenges, or what have you. And uh, in that series, I tell you how to write a book, and you don't have to be a writer to do that. In this episode, I'm gonna give you this whirlwind tour. So, 1990 to 2000, um, I uh, worked uh, for hours many times uh, writing my first book. Finally, I forced myself to uh, walk an 18-hole golf game, uh, golf game of, <laughs> I was gonna say of life, because that's what I compare uh, life to, uh, the front nine and the back nine but I would get up and I would walk all 18 holes before the golfers got on the course, and I would dictate a chapter based on one sheet 
that had uh, these concepts and bullet points. I finally forced myself to do that. When I got all done and had it transcribed, it was, uh, it was over 300 pages on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. And then it sat on my credenza for years because I, I was trying to make it perfect. So in the series, I talk about how to overcome uh, perfectionism. If you are a perfectionist, I can liberate you from that. Finally, when I got the book done, I thought I had to tell it all in one book. So we call this the War and Peace version. Uh, the title was Missed Fortune because of the fortunes people miss out on when they simply don't know what they don't know. It actually should have been four books, but I combined them all into one and it was four sections. And so this is, uh, it ended up being over 500 pages. And uh, I self-published this. And pretty soon after the first edition where I published 500, the second one, 2,500, the third one within 90 days, uh, 5,000, I was going through 5,000 copies a month. I didn't know that was bestseller status. So it got the attention of Time Warner at the time, who then wanted the rights to this book and also wanted to commission me to write a smaller, more condensed version of this, which was my second book. So I self-published first, and then Time Warner became my publisher for uh, the first four books. And then I went back to self-publishing for um, many reasons. And uh, it's been very, very profitable to do that. People get most of their books now uh, directly. They don't go to Barnes & Noble bookstore, Borders went out of business, and so forth. So the book industry has changed. But I have authored 12 books so far, and I'm working on my 13th. This was the first one. This uh, had four sections. The first section uh, talked about how to manage real estate equity for liquidity, safety, and rate of return better than most people manage their real estate equity. The second section talked about why IRAs and 401ks were not the best way to save for retirement and how you can accumulate access and transfer your money tax-free better than an IRA or 401k. The third section talked about where do you accumulate money totally tax-free and what are the best instruments and strategies, and that's where I introduce indexing and maximum funded indexed universal life and how it was uh, introduced back in 1980 by E.F. Hutton. It's my favorite vehicle. Uh, to accumulate access and transfer money tax-free. I've averaged returns of uh, over 10% uh, since uh, 1997. Since 1980, when it first came out, I've averaged 9.62%, okay, tax-free. The last uh, three chapters talk about um, what you do to be able to look at the big picture, uh, to be able to be balanced, and to be able to be charitable with your money and give back to society. So I have reprinted this numerous times and it became a bestseller. Time Warner um, uh, bought the rights to this, but allowed me to continue to self-publish. The next book uh, they commissioned me to write, uh, they gave me a $100,000 advance and it was Misfortune 101. They wanted me to, to sort of not go into all the details and all the charts and graphs because I, I sort of thought most people, uh, you know, analyzed like I did. They wanted to see all the percentages and numbers and, and we eliminated a lot of that. There's still charts in here, but this just basically gets to the bottom line. And this is where I began to write books that generally were comprised of about 12 chapters. Uh, a book that someone can read on a flight from San Francisco to New York, okay? And so uh, this one, we went through a half a million copies of this, Misfortune 101. This was released in 2003, and it was a hot seller for four years, uh, just flying out uh, of all of the different outlets. Uh, for four years, we went through a half million copies of Misfortune 101. If you'd like to get to the bottom line, uh, the concepts are still true in here. Uh, the numbers uh, may be a little bit uh, out of date because uh, things have changed with tax rates and what have you, but the, but the principles are the same. Then, uh, because that did so well, Time Warner uh, gave me a million dollar advance to write this one. Uh, this was released in 2007. It's called, called Last Chance Millionaire. Uh, I was gonna title it Baby Boomer Blunders because this is written to the 78 million uh, baby boomers, of which I'm one of them, who were in danger of outliving their money, uh, but this book taught them how to accumulate an extra million bucks that would generate 100,000 a year of tax-free income uh, as a supplement to retirement. 
And so this book, uh, we were so blessed, it became a New York Times and Wall Street Journal number one bestseller the second week it was released in 2007. And so uh, because of the 2008 crash, it really spiked as it was released and then it, it just sort of stayed steady. But this is my third book and this is what made me a New York Times bestselling author and Wall Street Journal. So that's called Last Chance Millionaire. Then I was gonna write one called Misfortune for uh, Women. And they said, put that on the back burner because my two sons, uh, they had both be, uh, had net worths of over 1.5 million each by the time they were 26 and 28 years old. So they commissioned my sons to write a 12 chapter book called Millionaire by 30, how to have your money earning more than you do by age 32. Why? Because the average college graduate in 2008, 10 years after graduating, only had a net worth of $15,000. That's pathetic. Uh, this book taught young people how to have a million bucks within 10 years, generating 80 to 100,000 a year of income, which was more than most uh, 30 year olds were earning at that time. So, you know, by age 32, a lot of people would graduate at age 22. By age 32, their money was earning more than they did. So this became a bestseller using the formulas that I teach in how to author a bestselling book and how to market it. That was book number four. After that, I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna self-publish. And so uh, I started doing a lot of books in uh, electronic format, eBooks. And so uh, I wrote uh, How to Have Laser Focus. Uh, laser is liquid asset safely earning returns. Uh, I wrote one because of 2008, How to Create Your Own Economic Stimulus. Save Yourself Because Big Government Can't. That came out in 2009. I had an ebook which was 30 pages long called Baby Boomer Blunders, which was actually chapter two of Last Chance Millionaire made into an ebook. Um, there are other ebooks, like I have one that I released recently for entrepreneurs. It's called The 10 Keys Transformation. And uh, that is a, an incredible book that, that I've invested over 3 million bucks in my life, sharpening my saw to run my business and uh, taking that three million and turning it into over a hundred million dollars. That is an electronic format only right now because in this day and age, a lot of people, especially young entrepreneurs, they don't need a hard copy. I still like a hard copy myself, but I'm 70 years old, I, I'm, I'm an old geezer, okay? Now, uh, another book that I uh, co-authored with my brother-in-law as a charitable fundraising to uh, do humanitarian service to third world uh, countries like the Dominican Republic, Guatemala, Nepal, uh, and it's called Learning Curves. My brother-in-law, Roy Hammond, is a retired uh, world-renowned dentist. He's a philanthropist and he, he has uh, conducted over 200 humanitarian trips to these third world countries. He raises money for the dental and surgical supplies when he goes and he does all of these uh, incredible things in all of these countries, fixing cleft palates or doing oral surgeries or what have you. To raise money, he conducts Harley Davidson tours for dentists and they pay five or $6,000 to come and go on a Harley ride for five days to Yellowstone or the Grand Canyon area. And uh, so that's what helps provide those. And on these Harley Davidson trips where he raises money, uh, he's had all kinds of things happen on these Harley trips. And I went along as a, uh, to, to train uh, these orthodontists and dentists how to take their practice to a whole new level. And so we decided to write the book, Learning Curves. All the proceeds of this goes to buy medical supplies uh, when we go to these uh, third world countries. But because of experiences we had on Harleys, the, the subtitle is Life Lessons Learned While Riding on a Harley Davidson Motorcycle. Okay, it's not about the destination, it's the journey. You go where you look, okay? It's, it's not if you're gonna fall, it's when. It's not how hard you fall, it's how you recover. Heavy load, tougher ride, okay? It's not about how loud the noise, it's about the tone, the mufflers on the, on the pipes, okay? Riding away from danger, okay? In a deep canyon, getting help is more difficult. Uh, when your voltage regulator wanes, your battery drains. That was a personal experience that happened to me on a Harley out in the middle of nowhere in Wyoming, okay? Uh, how much gas is in your tank? Some of those bugs sting, okay? Following a truck, you are blind to danger, okay? An attitude of gratitude and the end of the road. 
Uh, this is an awesome life lesson. There's 62 stories that I include in here. So my brother-in-law gives his take of what he learned, and I give my take. This is one of my favorite books. It's called Learning Curves. Uh, and the next hard copy is called Entitlement Abolition. This is how to lead your family from me to we. And uh, it's because I've had many, many very successful clients that would come in and I'd say, how did you build this empire, this multi-million dollar you know, net worth? And they would say, oh, I was raised uh, uh, by my parents who grew up after the Great Depression. They taught me how to work. Man, I've worked so hard. My kids will never have to work as hard as I did. And then they would come in 20 or 30 or 40 years later for Lauren in retirement. Uh, and I'd say, what's up? And they'd say, Doug, I don't know what's wrong with my kids. And now my grandkids, they don't even know how to work. And I would say, well, maybe you stole that from them. Maybe in your effort to help them, you hindered them. You always said what made a man out of you is how you overcame struggles. And now you always rescued them and bailed them out. And you're wondering why they're weak. And so they would ask me, well, how can I abolish this entitlement mindset they now have? Because they're always coming, dad, uh, can you pay for it? Can I have, when do I get my share? And so I put together the book, Entitlement Abolition. The first four chapters talk about that problem of how entitlement creeps in the cycle. And then the last eight chapters talk about how you abolish that and teach responsibility and accountability to those you care about, including your employees, if they have an entitlement mindset. This has been incredibly well received. It's called Entitlement Abolition. And here I disclose how to do equal opportunity trusts instead of equal distribution trusts, because there's nothing more unequal than the equal distribution to unequals. Uh, I talk about how to hold an annual grandpa's camp for your kids and grandkids, how to have family vacations with a purpose. Um, I would strongly recommend that you consider this book. It's one of my favorite books of all. And uh, this has helped so many people. I get more thank you notes from this book than any other book. This brings me to my 11th book. It's called The Laser Fund. And this now is flying off of our warehouse shelves. We send out sometimes a thousand of these a week, okay? I didn't know that was bestseller status. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess a lot of self-published authors, uh, they only print 500 to a maximum of 5,000 a year. I go through 10 to 15,000 every four to six months, okay? This is uh, a book that will teach you how to diversify and create the foundation for a tax-free retirement. And uh, it's actually two books in one. This side is for the left brain learner. It has all the charts and graphs and explanations, about uh, 200 pages. If you're a right brain learner, you flip it over this way. And this is about 100 pages, 12 chapters with 62 chicken soup for the financial soul stories. If you wanna use both your right brain and left brain, read both of these books. Now these all retail for about 20 bucks, but you know what? Uh, I love to gift these books. I'm at a stage in my life, I like to gift these books. So if you go to laserfund.com, or you go to entitlementabolition.com and you contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling, I cover the rest of that cost and I will pay for the book. I will fire out a hard copy to you, priority mail. There's options in there to listen and learn and watch and learn, but uh, this is really about you uh, and your brighter future, it's not about me. So frankly, um, I don't earn income really off of book royalties. Uh, this helps me to be able to get information out to the people who I want to share it with. That's my passion and purpose. Now that brings me to the 12th book. That's for entrepreneurs. That's an ebook right now. It's called The Ten Keys Transformation. This is how to take your entrepreneurial practice to 10 times in 60 months or less while simplifying your life. And that's called The Ten Keys Transformation. You can claim a, a free copy of that by going to 10 Keys Book free 10 keysbook.com. So this is the sum total of about 3,000 pages that I've written. And of course, any uh, writer or author knows uh, I've gone through way more pages of that, but, but I've condensed it down to 3,000 pages. And it's the sum total of $3 million or more that I've invested sharpening my saw, as Stephen Covey would say. So when you do the math, uh, every one of these 3,000 pages, I've invested 1,000 bucks per page. Uh, why do I do this? Because if I can take what I've learned, which has helped make me you know, millions of dollars, I want to bless your life. 
so that you don't have to go through a long learning curve. And I hope that every single page of any of these books is worth at least the thousand dollars I invested to learn what I'm sharing on that page. Does that make sense? So again, this isn't about me. This is about you. And uh, that's why I don't earn anything off of the books. I try to cover my cost of shipping and handling to get the books out. Uh, I do not want to go to my grave with this wisdom trapped in here or in here. So my method is to get it out in this format or in video on this channel or in audio so that you can read and learn, watch and learn, listen and learn however you like to learn. Mm -hmm.